Hello, it's your friends at Time and Tide, and today we are talking about the 14 differences between the new Tag Heuer Aqua Racer and the old Tag Heuer Aqua Racer from 2015. But before we start that story, it's customary to ask a question. What are you wearing today? I can answer that question with my favorite of the new Aqua Racers by so far, the Reference 844 Limited Edition that's on my wrist. Tell me what's on yours. And also, tell me about Tag Heuer. This is a brand that has a huge presence in Australia. It's one of the biggest markets for the brand, so I've grown up looking at this brand with great desire. Tell me about you. And now, I'll tell you about the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer. This dive model that we see today actually has its roots in the model that this one reprises, which is the reference 844 Hoyer dive watch from 1978. Now, I don't know if you're watching our Watches and Wonders coverage, but this watch caused a stir because it is so handsome and fetching with its uh, red details on the dial, with what is now a very creamy uh, loom, and also just this classic dive watch looks with a motorsport style bracelet that we just don't associate with Hoyer. You don't think of dive watches when you think of Hoyer. And this watch proved that deep in their archives lay this beautiful canvas that uh, the Aqua Racer could bring back to life in 2021. 1978 was indeed the beginning of Hoyer's dive watch history. Moving on from that, in 1982, there was the Professional 2000 model, and then in 2004, the first Aqua Racer, and then since then, the biggest and most recent upgrade was six years ago in 2015, which is the model we're comparing the new one to, which is one we have right here. Now, at first look, I have to admit, I did immediately identify that this new Aqua Racer model is different to the one I knew from 2015. It's only when you start digging into the design do you realize just how different and how far reaching the design uh, adjustments have gone with this update. And I was speaking to Guy Beauvais, the designer that was at the heart of this project, and he spoke passionately about many, many nuances that were broken down now into the 14 differences. The first difference that you'll notice when you're holding them both in your hand is the case height. The diameter remains the same at 43 millimeters. However, the 2015 model was 12.8 millimeters thick. The 2021 model is 12.3. Now this is slightly different from Tag Heuer's measurements. We just measured these with digital calipers, so we're confident that these numbers are pretty close, but we're talking about a half a mil difference in case height, which is significant. Number two, the second big change for the Aqua Racer this year is the movement of the date window. Now this has been probably the second or third most commented on feature of the new model. The date window moves from three, the customary position, where it had a cyclops over the date, meaning that it, it magnified the date and also gave a slight uh, protrusion off the glass. It's moved from three to six. Now six is a very popular spot for a date window. However, this one has caused a little bit of a stir for being, uh, again, a cyclops date at that position, which is very unusual. And also, when you hold it in your hand, you realize this is a recessed Cyclops. So the Cyclops glass is actually within the glass as opposed to on top of, which is very unusual, but very cool because you do get that effect where the date is much easier to read. Number three, weight. How different is the weight between the 2015 model and the new one? It is huge. We are talking a 215 gram model back in 2015 to a 183 gram model now. Now that is something you can very discernibly feel in your hands. So you're definitely gonna feel it on the wrist. Number four is the lug to lug distance. Now this is a very popular new measurement that is much more indicative of how a watch wears than its sheer diameter or height. So the lug to lug of the 2015 model was 50 millimeters, which is a bit of a Goldilocks zone for many people. And the lug to lug of the new model is a half a mil shorter at 49.5 millimeters. Number five, now this is something that really is a detail that might seem insignificant, but I can tell you it adds a really lovely additional shine to this watch, which is this polished chamfer of the case flanks. Now on the 2015 model, we have a uniformly brushed case, 
with no chamfering of an edge to give it that extra little bit of shine. Whereas the 2021 model has this lovely polished chamfer, which really lifts the watch, makes it a little more dressy. And again, shows when I interviewed the, uh, the designer behind this watch, Guy Beauvais, he talked about how the chamfer uh, creates a, a really nice light play, which you notice on the wrist. In case you're wondering about the inspiration for this lovely little nuance, it is in fact, again, the reference 844 Hoyer, which had a polished chamfer along that case side, uh, which is another reference to that heritage model. Number six, we are once again in the detail of the bezel. Now, any watch geek or any watch lover that is worth their salt knows how important bezel feel can be. Now this is the sound of the 2015 model. Quite a dead ticking sound, not much play, but again, quite stiff to turn and a flat and dead sounding bezel tick. In the 2021 model, we have a much easier bezel to turn, again with no play as you push back against the uh, unidirectional bezel and a brighter tick that is a little more resonant and a bit more satisfying, I must say, as someone that uh, loves a bezel twist and will often do that to, to strangers and friends watches. This one delivers quite a resonant and satisfying click as you move the bezel around. Now, Tag Heuer referred to this improved bezel as extra sensoriality. Now that is something I'm not even sure what it means, but I know from a tactile point of view, this bezel is very satisfying to turn. It is very well engineered and very stiff when you try to turn it back against its unidirectional movement to the left. And again, that has a very different sound to the 2015, which is flatter and has less resonance. Number seven is a small but functionally important adjustment to the bezel. In the 2015 model, we had a bezel with a notch to separate each of the sides of the bezel, which did assist you with the turn, but only as your finger sort of slipped around to the notch at the end of each side. The new model has extra serration with five notches taken out of each side of the bezel, which allows you to get much better grip. And once again, this is a reference to the bezel of the reference 844, which had uh, notches around the bezel, making it easier to grip as you changed your dive time, either on the surface or underwater. Number eight is the now standard use of ceramic on the bezel. In previous models, we had ceramic, we had aluminium, we had carbon, there were all kinds of materials used. Whereas now in the 2021 model, all aqua races come with a ceramic bezel. Number nine, the fine adjustment deployant clasp. Now this is really easy to use. I'm not usually good with these details in a watch. I often need help with all the clipping and the clasping. This one, you simply depress both sides of this fine adjustment clasp and move it in whichever direction you need. If you need extra room, you move it to the left. If you wanna make it tighter like I did to the one I'm wearing right now, you move it to the right. And it simply stays in place once you take your fingers off the depressible sides. Very easy to use. Number 10, we're already there. This is a big one. It is the hour hand on the 2021 model, which is Tag Heuer described as beefier, and that's really what it is. It's a much wider sword style hand as opposed to the previous, which had the hour and minute hands the same width. It's a really nice touch to me. It makes the watch, gives it a much stronger look. Number 11 is another change on the dial. It is the indexes. In 2015, we had trapezoidal indexes for all five minute increments, including 15s, where they were slightly larger. In 2021, the 15s remain as trapezoids, but all other indexes are octagonal shapes, which I have to say in this, I just noticed on the limited edition model, there's also octagonal uh, holes in the rubber strap, which to me somewhat references the motorsport past but uh, this octagon definitely recurs on the watch in lots of different places. Number 12 is less dial text. This is a popular choice for me. We have taken the reference to the movement caliber four off the dial. In what remains is automatic and then the water resistance of 300 meters or 1000 feet. Lucky number 13, it's more dial text. It's the name of the model. And a very small but interesting change is taking the reference to the name from underneath the logo and putting it above the logo, just beneath the 12 index. 
And the very last change, number 14, is probably the one you've been waiting for. It's the price. How much do all of these adjustments, improvements, upgrades, how much does all this thoughtful detail impact on the price? It is around about 10%. So this watch in 2015 was 4,000 Australian dollars. It is now for the same one in steel, 4,350. Of course, different price for the limited edition. This model in titanium on a rubber strap is 6,300 Australian dollars and limited to 844 pieces. And lastly, that very fetching titanium model with brush gray and an olive dial, that is $6,100 in grade two titanium. So look, thank you for sitting through the world's longest and most detailed video. But hey, when it comes to upgrades, we like to dig into whether these improvements and upgrades over time are meaningful or if they're really just a bit of marketing spin. Here, we have a vastly improved and really thoughtfully reconsidered Aqua Racer. If I'm honest, this reference 844 is the first Aqua Racer that I truly love and would consider purchasing. For a platform within Tag Heuer's world that is largely commercial and playing to very popular trends, I think this is an innovative year for the collection and considering that Tag Heuer are going to focus on it, not just in 2021, but also in 2022, I think it's a promising opening gambit. We have titanium, we have heritage touches, we have all kinds of thoughtful details that make this watch really a pleasure to wear and a lot of ergonomic changes that make it more comfortable, uh, less hefty on the wrist. So well done Tag Heuer, well done Guy Beauvais. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to tell us what you're wearing and also your story with Tag Heuer. Thank you.